Hi everyone, uh, it's Robert Bryce here. A quick power brief. I've been busy lately and haven't had uh, much time to write and so I want to do a quick video uh, based on an article that uh, was published in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend. Uh, here's the title, China to Create uh, National Rare Earths Giant. Um, and this article spurred me to do the power brief because it underscores an issue that I've been writing about now for more than a decade. In fact, in my, my fourth book, Power Hungry, which came out in 2010, I talked about this issue of import dependence and the idea that the U.S. was going to trade one form of ener energy uh, import dependence, that was oil and gas, for another part, which was rare earth elements dependence. But here's, the, here's how the article says, or here's the, how the article begins, rather. China has approved the creation of one of the world's largest rare earths companies to aim to maintain its dominance in the global supply chain of the strategic metals as tension de tensions deepen with the U.S., according to people familiar with the matter. The new company will be called China Rare Earth Group and will be based in resource-rich Jiangxi province in southern China. They're going to combine uh, several companies, including China Min Metals, Aluminum Corp of China, and Gangzhou Rare Earth Group. The combined group is designed to further strengthen Beijing's pricing power and avoid infighting among Chinese companies and to use the clout to undercut Western efforts to dominate critical technologies, one of the people said. So here you have it in, in very clear terms, China once again flexing its rare earth muscle and saying, we're going to take care of China first, the rest of the world be damned. And this is something I wrote about back in 2019 for the New York Post. Uh, and I was uh, using some work that had been done by Richard Harrington from the Natural History Museum in London. I interviewed him on the Power Hungry podcast a few weeks ago when we talked about this very issue of this idea of moving away from hydrocarbons and as he put it, moving from hydrocarbons to metals or a metals based economy rather than the ones based on hydrocarbons. But the idea that the U.S. will be able to achieve this and do it quickly and easily is just flat wrong. Uh, using Har Harrington's calculations, I estimate that the U.S. to convert half of its auto fleet uh, to electric vehicles would require in rough terms nine times world current cobalt production, four times global neodymium output. Neodymium, of course, is a rare earth, three times global lithium and two times world copper. Well, who controls the, the majority of those, according to the International Energy Agency, who is the, has dominant positions in all of those elements? It's the Chinese. So uh, I won't go on uh, any further here. I just uh, wanted to make this quick power brief because I can, I can talk faster than I can write. And uh, this was a thing that just jumped off the page to me and said, look at what is happening. This idea that we're going to make some energy transition, it's going to be quick and it's going to be easy. It's just flat wrong. The, the fact is that hydrocarbons are here to stay. They're going to be here for a very long time. And the U.S. is going to face some real strategic challenges, uh, some real strategic challenges if it attempts to move away from hydrocarbons and then move to these so-called green technologies. Well, doing so means depending on China. And I'm no geopolitical analyst, but China is not our friend. So I will stop there. Uh, uh, thanks for listening to this Power Brief. Uh, I'll have more coming. Thanks.